split up. One moment, please, you two. It appears this is your first time visiting Sumeru City. Oh, yeah, that's right. But how did you know that? Because there's currently no information on either of you in the Akasha. But no need to worry, that won't prevent you from entering the city. In fact, the Academia conveniently provides each traveler to Sumeru City with a device. Perhaps you two have heard of the Akasha before. It's our beloved Greater Lord Rukadavata's lasting legacy, a treasure trove of collected knowledge. After centuries of tireless research on the Akasha, the Academia created one of its most ingenious inventions, the Akasha Terminal. As long as you are within Sumeru's borders, you may use an Akasha terminal to connect directly to the Akasha and access any knowledge you need. I should mention that due to technical limitations, the operation of Akasha terminals will be much smoother and more effective in large cities such as Sumeru City and Port Ormos. Oh, so this is the thing that Tainari was telling us about. It sounds pretty amazing. You two are quite fortunate. Until recently, it was standard practice to only issue Akasha terminals to outlanders who spent an extended amount of time in Sumeru. However, this policy was recently changed, and now all travelers are issued one upon arrival. Here are your Akasha terminals. Please handle them with care. <laughs> it kind of looks like a leaf. To activate it, simply hold it in your hand and say the following phrase to yourself. <clears throat> May the mighty God bless us with their voice of wisdom. Oh, since this little doodad lets you access knowledge, maybe we can use it to find a way to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let's give it a try. <clears throat> May the mighty God bless us with their voice of wisdom. <gasps> Whoa! Just now, something clicked, and Paimon suddenly knew how to use this thing! It seems all we need to do is concentrate on what we want to know, and BAM! You get it! Oh, that'll come in real handy! Exactly! That is the power of the Akasha! And with that, let me officially welcome you both to Sumeru City! May the wisdom of the Dendro Archon always be your guide! Okay, now that we're in, we can check the Akasha about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let Paimon try. Hmm. <gasps> 500 years ago, the sages found a newly born deity from within some scorched ruins. The deity now resides in the sanctuary of Suristana. Hmm. Seems pretty similar to what Kali was telling us. Okay, next, let's concentrate on asking how to meet her. Hmm. Anything. Um, hmm. the Akasha didn't respond to Paimon's question. Oh, come on! Ugh. Focusing on this question feels like when you have something you're trying to remember and it's on the tip of your tongue, but you just can't think of it. Ugh. Paimon's brain is exhausted. Oh! Smart idea! But what are you going to ask it? just arrived in Sumeru? You know, maybe we're not qualified to receive an answer to this sort of question or something. Uh-oh. Paimon's getting all teary-eyed all of a sudden. 
It feels like the people of Sumeru really miss their Archon. <sighs> well, seems no matter which way we try, we can't find anything that'll lead us to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hmm. Guess our only choice now is to try meeting with the researcher that Tainari recommended. He's from Sumeru, and even has a position in the Academia. Maybe he'll be able to access more info from the Akasha. Let's see. Tainari wrote an address on the letter's envelope. Oh, it's not far from the city's gate. Let's head over and have a look. Hopefully he's at home. Hello, are you Rohawi? Yes, that's me. Can I help you? Great! You see, Tainari sent us here and... What? Tainari? I... Please, th there's no need to say anything, really. Sure, I admit that the article I published last month wasn't my best work, and maybe the data didn't produce the most convincing results, but... Here! This is a letter from Tainari! Oh, let me see... Oh! Ooh, what a relief. You two nearly scared the life out of me. So, you two just have some questions for me? Seems even Tainari acknowledges my innate ability for procuring information. So, what is it you two would like to know? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You mean you want to meet the Dendro Archon herself? Uh, this isn't exactly my area of expertise, but let me see what I can find in the Akasha. Hmm. Sorry, the Akasha didn't respond to my query. What? You too? But what about your abilities for getting information and all that? Uh, I'm almost sure you'd be able to access more info than we did. Well, as I said, this isn't my area of expertise. I am but a lowly researcher, so the Akasha doesn't see a need for me to know more about the Dendro Archon. All I know is that ever since Lesser Lord Kusanali returned to Sumeru, she's never left the Sanctuary of Sorastana or made a public appearance. Huh. Didn't expect her to be such a mysterious figure. The Dendro Archon is somewhat of a recluse. Perhaps she just doesn't want to entertain visitors, which would explain the lack of information in the Akasha. <laughs> no need to worry just yet. I'm only hypothesizing here. You could certainly try asking around and see if anyone else has ideas. And besides, you two should consider the bright side of things. Not being able to see Lesser Lord Kusanali may not be a bad thing. In this world, there will always be information you cannot obtain from the Akasha and things you can never accomplish. Knowing when to yield is a form of wisdom. Take me, for example. It's a miracle if my brain cells can spit out one paper every three years. But Tainari? That guy can publish three papers in just a single year. Uh, okay. Thanks for your advice. Don't mention it. If you two ever want information about things like who's been promoted within the academia or relations between the six great sages, come find me. Hey, come on! This is a survival skill at the Academia. Oh, Paimon's expectations were pretty low, but this is so low, it's like digging holes in the dirt! Oh. So what do we do now? Even if we want to talk to someone, we don't know anybody here! Huh? Like who? Oh, you're right! Catherine! The Adventurer's Guild has its own intel network! Let's hurry and find her!
Astra Abyssosk. Hello, Traveler and Paimon. Catherine, we need your help with something. Understood. The Adventurer's Guild is always ready to serve you. With what do you require assistance? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You two wish to meet with Sumeru's Archon. Understood. Please wait. I apologize, but I am unable to call up any relevant information in the Akasha. I'm also unable to locate any pertinent information in my personal memory. Aww, another dead end. Well, if Catherine can't help us, then we really don't know anyone else to ask now. Please do not worry. I may know of someone who can help you two. In Sumeru, the Adventurous Guild does not serve as the vanguard of information. Rather, there are numerous active mercenary groups collectively known as the Aramites. They take on various contracts and work all across Sumeru, so they naturally accrue intelligence. An Aramite brigade called the Corps of Thirty is in charge of Sumeru City's defenses. Not only are they the oldest brigade, but they are responsible for managing and coordinating the affairs of all other mercenary brigades. Corps of Thirty? What a weird name. Supposedly, they are named as such because their ranks numbered 30 at their inception. Asphant, an advisor with the Corps of Thirty, maintains good relations with the Adventurer's Guild. Though he's already retired, he and his words carry great weight within mercenary circles. If you'd like to get in contact with him, you can find him at the Corps of Thirty's headquarters, the Citadel of Regzar. You're welcome. I wish you two the best of luck. We look forward to your exploits in Sumeru. Alright! Off to the Citadel of Riggs there we go! Welcome. The Adventurer's Guild told me to expect you to. It's nice to meet you, Asphalt. We'd like to ask you about something. I see. So, Catherine's the one who sent you this way. Ha! <laughs> It's true that the Aramites' network is vast, but even I can't help you meet the Dendro Archon. Wait, seriously? That's it? Haha, <laughs> afraid so. The Aramites aren't terribly religious, so we don't know much about divinities. As far as the Akasha goes, we can access even less than you. We originally came from the desert. The gods there died off long ago. Since those days, we've used our own two hands to carve out a living. We don't beg gods for their aid. It isn't just us, though. If you ask me, I think most in Sumeru aren't interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. Oh? Why's that? Just take the Academia, for example. They're the ones who truly rule Sumeru. Although they believe in gods, most of them only care for the late, greater Lord Rugadavada. In their eyes, she was the one who founded Sumeru and gifted us with the Akasha. Lesser Lord Kusanali just happened to inherit her legacy. 
Because of the Academia's influence, most citizens are more familiar with Greater Lord Rukadavada and hold her in greater esteem. Not to mention that Lesser Lord Kusanali never makes an appearance, and the Academia never announces anything about her. As far as the people of Sumeru are concerned, she's just a god that exists. And that's all. Really? Aww. After hearing all of that, Paimon sort of feels bad for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Ha! <laughs> but who knows? We're all just guessing when it comes down to it. Besides, I'm sure the God of Wisdom doesn't worry about her reputation among people like us. All right. Well, thanks for the info, Osfond. <laughs> no problem. Always happy to help out the Adventurer's Guild. <laughs> was right about most people's attitudes here. Not only are they not interested in the Dendro Archon, they even say stuff like, if the Akasha doesn't think I should know, then I don't need to know about it. We've been asking for information non-stop ever since we got to Sumeru. But the harder we try, the more helpless everything seems. Isn't there at least one person in this entire city who cares about Lesser Lord Kusanali? Oh, uh, you two are interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali? Huh? Who are you? From the sound of it, you two are outlanders who recently arrived here. You've been asking around for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Dunyarzad, one of Lesser Lord Kusanali's faithful followers. Whoa, really? Then do you know how we can meet with her? I'm afraid I can't help you with that. But your conversation earlier did happen to remind me of a legend about the Dendro Archon. Sure. It goes like this. Long, long ago, there was a man who heard a prophecy. It predicted that a great calamity was about to befall him. Panicked by what he heard, the man sought out the Dendro Archon in hopes that she would bless him, with the wisdom to help him escape his predicament. The man journeyed across deserts and through rainforests, and experienced tribulations of every kind. However, he still couldn't find any trace of the Dendro Archon. In despair, he thought, alas, the Archon has abandoned me. He then had no choice but to sorrowfully resign to his fate. Okay, and then what happened? And then, the calamity came. But to his own surprise, the man felt somehow emboldened by the trials of his journey. By relying on his own strength, he managed to overcome the adversity. At that moment, a bird perched upon his shoulder. This bird was, in fact, an avatar of the Dendro Archon. She said, Oh, Archon Seeker, do you now understand? She and her wisdom have long been found by you. Along your journey, we were in every flower and blade of grass, every ray of sparkling sun and every breath of dancing wind. So long as you continue to think and ponder, we'll be wherever you go. Yeah, thanks for the story! Paimon feels all warm and fuzzy inside after that. <laughs> uh, in a way. It seems like this story is also one of the Dendro Archon's avatars. Dunyarzad, since you worship Lesser Lord Kusanali, can you tell us anything else about her? Of course. So did you two know that, uh... uh I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but it seems something's come up now. Uh, let's chat another day. Someone. Hmm. Dunyarzad 
Bird was acting super nervous just now. You think they're looking for her? Ugh, this stinks! We finally managed to find a lead about Lesser Lord Kusanali! We can't let them get in the way now! <sighs> Let's see if we can get rid of them. Then we can catch up with Dinyarzad! Hey, have you two seen a brown-haired girl wearing a purple top and a long blue dress? We're looking for her. Uh, did she have bandages wrapped around her wrists? Yes, that's her. Did you see which direction she went? Uh, yeah, she went that way. Quick, after her! Unfortunately, I believe there's still more of them out there looking for me. Uh-oh, looks like there are some coming this way. There's a tavern on the other side of the port we can go to. You probably wouldn't expect me to hide in a place like that. All right, let's move out. Stay behind us. We'll keep an eye out for anyone looking for you. We made it. Oh, they shouldn't be able to find us now. Wait, stand down, Dia. My lady, who are these two? They're travelers that I met on the street just a moment ago. They happened to notice that you were all searching for me, so they helped me hide. I see. In that case, you two should scram. There's nothing here for you. Wait a sec! Who the heck are you? And why are you shooing us away? I'm Miss Dunyarzad's bodyguard, here to see that she returns home safe and sound. <sighs> My lady, let's get going. You've been gone for so long that your parents are worrying themselves sick. And if I refuse to go with you? It'd be easier for the both of us if you cooperated. But if you insist on not going, then I'll have to carry you like a sack of potatoes. Hey! Dunyarzad already said she doesn't want to go back! Why are you still pushing her? Stay out of this. You don't understand the situation. Sorry, my lady. Even though I'm your bodyguard, your parents are my employers. I have to answer to them. How much? Wait, what? How much mora do I have to pay you to become your employer? So you never listen to my parents ever again. Double? A triple? Give me some time and I'll get that much. My lady, this isn't about mora. I don't know what you think of us Aramites, but let me say this. I like mora. 
but I'll never go against my principles. That's why I'm here looking for you. Sure, it's an order from my employer, but my conscience was also telling me it's the right thing to do. And knowing your health, carelessly running around like this is gonna hurt you. For the sake of those who love you, don't be stubborn. No, you're wrong. I'm aware of my limits and I know what I'm doing. Honestly, the only people being stubborn right now are my parents. And they know perfectly well that it makes no difference if I'm at home or not. They still won't accept reality. And every time I bring this up, they just change the subject. Dia, you've been living with us a long time already. This should be old news to you. <sighs> Dia, I know it hasn't been easy for mother and father, and I'm grateful for everything they've done for me. But there's someone else in this world I'm also grateful to. Because she saved me. The love I have for her is the same I have for my parents. This is my life and my last chance. So I want to do something meaningful. My lady, are you sure what you're doing now is meaningful? Yes, I'm sure. At least, it is to me. <sighs> Fine, I won't ask you to return home anymore. But let me make something very clear. I'm only doing this because I respect your determination, not because I agree with you. Thank you, Dia. <sighs> Sorry for being so rude just now. My nerves were acting up. And I even brought up your payment in such an offensive way. Uh, don't worry about it, my lady. I did say that I like Mara. Besides, that's our next topic of conversation. Today's little excursion caused such a ruckus that every single bodyguard at the estate was deployed. It wouldn't be easy to hide things from your old man. Since this definitely won't be your last escapade, here's a little tip. You should at least make it look like your room and things are still in order when you leave. Also, you'll need someone to cover you for when you're out and about. So, I'll let you hire me, my lady. This way, everyone wins. As for the pay, let's say mm, half of what your father pays me. We can settle the bill when we return to the estate. Okay, deal. Yay! Looks like they've reached an understanding! <laughs> I'm fine, really. I, I just feel a little tired now that things have calmed down. <sighs> My lady, stop trying to look tough. We're already in a tavern, so let's rest up and grab some grub. I'm sorry for worrying you two. If you don't mind, I'd like for you to join us. Sure! After you rest up, we want to hear more about Lesser Lord Kusanali. If it isn't Dia, haven't seen you in nearly half a year. Word on the street is that you're a bodyguard for the Homayani family now. <laughs> Don't you find that kind of work boring? Nah, you get used to it. How about a menu over here? You got it, huh? Isn't this little Miss Homayani herself? We don't get to serve personages like you very often. We'll be sure to prepare our very best. Thank you, sir, but there's no need. I don't have a lot of mora on me, and I really ought to save as much as I can. Uh, but please bring these two the best food you have. They're my new friends, so I want to be a good host for them. Yeah, we're already super grateful for everything you told us about Lesser Lord Kusanali. How about our coconut charcoal cakes? They're our signature snack, and they run cheap. Look, other customers over there are eating some now. Uh, they look kind of burnt and dry. Paimon will pass. Hey, come on! Paimon has personal preferences too, you know. Dunyarzad. We asked a lot of people when we first arrived, and almost nobody was interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. So, what made you want to follow her? Well, remember when you asked me if I knew how to meet the Dendro Archon? 
Even though I don't know how, I think I've actually seen her before. Huh? Really? Yes, it was when I was a child. At the time, my illness had kept me bedridden for the better part of a year. I was stuck inside and couldn't make any friends, and my parents did their best to find treatments for me. But even then, the Akasha didn't have any helpful information. My younger self no longer had any hopes or dreams. One flare-up was so bad that I was in a semi-conscious state for several days. Then one night, I woke up alone in my room. I was terrified. My body was paralyzed. Even if I cried, there was no sound. At that moment, an ethereal voice spoke in my mind. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. <gasps> Who are you? How do you know my name? Um, how do I explain this? You might not be able to understand, but actually, I know everything about you. Really? Of course. I know that you're scared of thunder, that you hate taking medicine every morning, and that you love counting the petals on your mom's skirt. Wow, you really do know everything. Junior is odd. Is there anything you want? Want? Not really. I, I can't go anywhere or do anything. Huh? But aren't you a child? All children have wishes. Tell me what you want, and maybe I can make it happen. But uh, can you make my illness go away? Oh. I'm sorry, but I'm not powerful enough to do that right now. Then, can you be my friend? After that, the voice said, Okay, I'll be your friend. Although my body was suffering during those days, that voice encouraged me and told me many wondrous things. Beyond my window was the flourishing Sumeru city. Beyond the city was a lush rainforest. And beyond that was the wall of Samiel, deserts, and all of Tevat. Once I finally made it through that bout of illness, I couldn't hear that voice anymore. I told my mother about it, but she said that I must have been dreaming. But I know that that voice wasn't a figment of my imagination. Before that, I had never heard of Tevat. Yes, for sure. If it weren't for that voice, I would have never grown curious about the outside world, nor would I have learned how to read and enjoy so many books. That voice sparked a desire for wisdom. It had to have been the Dendro Archon. I've been hoping for a chance to repay her kindness. In fact, I was running around today to help prepare the Subzerus Festival for her. What's the Subzerus Festival? It's Lesser Lord Cusinelli's birthday, which was the day that she was found by the sages. It's actually an old holiday that originally celebrated Greater Lord Rupadavata's birthday. When she passed away, the holiday eventually became a celebration of the Lesser Lord's birthday. I heard everyone was overjoyed when they welcomed her back to Sumeru. In those days, the festival was a huge deal. But because of the academia's influence, people have gradually lost interest in the festival. The Academia actively participates in Sumeru's many holidays dedicated to Greater Lord Rukudavata. But when it comes to the Subzerus Festival, forget any funding. They practically act like it doesn't exist. Maybe they see Lesser Lord Kusanali's birth as confirmation of Greater Lord Rukudavata's death, so they're reluctant to celebrate it. Aww, but that's awful! It is. It's absolutely terrible. Sure, the Greater Lord founded Sumeru, but hasn't Lesser Lord Kusanali been the one quietly protecting us for the past few hundred years? <clears throat> Just remember that we're still out in public. Don't get too carried away now. I know that people over by the Grand Bazaar still hold the Subzerus Festival to this day. 
but I hadn't met any of them before, so I was never able to contribute. But recently, I made a friend there who also follows Lesser Lord Kusanali. I gave her my savings because I want her to throw a wonderful festival this year. That's the least I could do for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hold on, my lady, does this friend happen to be Nilu, the one who sends flowers to the estate? Yes, that's her. Mm, I saw her leaving the other day with a nervous look on her face. It seemed like she was hiding something in her arms. Did you give her something? Uh, yes. Uh, initially, I didn't have much Mora prepared, so I had Nilu sell one of my skirts. I've agreed with Nilu to meet up at the Grand Bazaar today, and see how things are coming along. Dia, would you accompany me? Sure. That's quite the trip, though. I'll carry you. No, that would be too much. Even for you. You might as well just accept the lift. If I let you walk, who knows how long it'll take us. And if anything happens to you, then I'd really never hear the end of it from your father. But of course. And Nilu will be thrilled to hear there are more people interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. Sorry I'm late, Nilu. Oh, Dunyarzad. It was taking you so long that I assumed you got trapped at home, but you made it in the end. Uh-oh. But if Dia's here, that means you got caught, right? You could say that, uh, but everything worked out. She's on our side now. <laughs> uh, not completely. Oh. And who are these two? Oh, meet the Traveler and Paimon, my two newest friends. They're visitors who just arrived at Sumera City, and are looking for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali. So you're followers from another land? Oh, really? Well, that's okay. You're still invited to the Sabzeris Festival. By the way, Dunyarzad, we've already started decorating the Grand Bazaar. It looks spectacular, thanks to your generous contribution. You're very welcome. It's the only thing I could do. Do you still have enough Mora? Uh, probably? But don't sweat it. We've already finished renovating the stage. Come on, I'll show you. Not bad. <laughs> the last time I was here, the stairs were full of holes. The stairs were nothing. A little while ago, we discovered that the tree above the stage had a huge chunk of bark ready to fall off. Mr. Zubair was worried sick. We reported it to the Academia many times, but they never sent anyone to deal with it. We didn't want anything bad happening, so we were going to cancel all the stage performances. Oh, probably because it was the theater asking. The Academia looks down on performers like us. They probably think it would be best if the theater closed down completely. 
We can't let that happen, though. Not only would everyone involved in the theater go hungry, but then we wouldn't be able to hold the Subzerus Festival anymore. Thank the Dendra Archon for doing your Zod. But the more she gave us, we hired someone to patch up the tree, and we also gave the stage a much-needed makeover. The stage is going to be even prettier when it's festival time. I can't wait for you to see it. And I can't wait to see you on the stage. You've been practicing so long already. It's almost time for your dream to become reality. <laughs> it's our dream. I'll do my best for the two of us. Milu, what are you going to be doing at the festival? She'll be dancing the dance of Subzeros, the most important performance at the Subzeros festival. Dunyarzad, have you told him the origin of this holiday? I only told them about the Greater Lord and Lesser Lord so far. Okay, then I'll tell you two about how this holiday came to be. According to legend, the Sabzerus Festival was originally the Goddess of Flowers' birthday celebration for the Greater Lord. A long, long time ago, on one of Greater Lord Ruka Devata's birthdays, her friends threw her a celebratory banquet. Some of the gods got drunk. One started playing music, and the Greater Lord started singing, so the Goddess of Flowers began to dance. As she danced upon the grass, countless beautiful Padisaras began to bloom wherever she stepped. Those brilliant purple flowers became her dazzling stage. All the gods clamored, Oh, if only time could stop at this very moment. Huh? Really? Oh, you probably mean because all the gods in this story are no longer alive. Although they aren't around anymore, they're preserved in our tradition of dance. This outfit I'm wearing is apparently based on how the goddess of flowers looked. Though we're just tiny people compared to the divine, we still have to do our best to make sure that the birthday girl feels loved on her special day. Nilu, you of all people will definitely be able to convey our well wishes to the Dendro Archon. I also noticed that you went the extra mile and scattered Padisaras around the stage. <laughs> they symbolize the Goddess of Flowers, after all. It's just a shame that all the real Padisaras went extinct after her death. Yeah. The Greater Lord brought forth Padisaras in memory of the Goddess of Flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful purple. Thinking about the Goddess of Flowers dance makes me wish I could have seen it. If my stage were anything like that, uh, I'd be thrilled if I had just two real Padisaras on the stage. <sighs> so, Traveler in Paimon, what do you think? Interested in the Sabzerus Festival? Will you two be coming? All of Lesser Lord Kusanelli's followers will be there for her birthday. It'll be a good opportunity for you to learn more about her. enjoying a festival. Besides, it's Lesser Lord Cusinelli's birthday. She'll be happy to have more people who are celebrating it. <laughs> so how about we all attend the Subzerus Festival together? Dunyarzad, let me show you which stage decorations we've picked out so far. Traveler in Paimon, if that doesn't sound interesting to you, then feel free to explore the area. Everyone at the Grand Bazaar loves Lesser Lord Kusanali, and we're all looking forward to the Sabzerus Festival. In that case, we'll take a look around!
Milu, your outfit looks amazing. There's also something different about you from when we first met up. <laughs> I thought I'd add a little extra pizzazz to my dress for the festival. See? Wow, did you sew all that yourself? Uh-huh. Sewing is a fundamental skill for everyone in the theater company because we make all our own costumes. Did you know that Mr. Zubair not only can make costumes, but props too? <laughs> I've noticed that you can't keep your eyes off that crown over there. Would you like to try it on? <laughs> May I? Of course. The legends say that the goddess of flowers had beautiful horns on her head. So this crown was made to reflect that. Ah, oh. oh, Dunya Zod. You look absolutely stunning with it on. It's like I'm looking at the goddess of flowers herself. Huh. Revamping the stage for the festival couldn't have been easy, that's for sure. I bet this year's festival will be one to remember. I don't know much about the Grand Bazaar, but I do know that the residents here have a penchant for song and dance. <laughs> Two things that the Academia doesn't particularly approve of. Oh, and the perfume sold around here is a lot better than what you'll find elsewhere. The fragrances are longer lasting and they're gentler on your skin and... Uh, I mean, <clears throat> that's uh, what I've heard at least. Things are really shaping up, and there's a buzz around the festival this year. We're expecting people from all over to come by this year and buy things during the festivities. Don't be fooled into thinking that Sumeru City has the best of everything. Some festival snacks are only offered here in the Grand Bazaar. And when it comes to musicians, dancers, or singers, the Grand Bazaar's got the best of the best. Sure, those folks at the Academia might not like it, but what's a festival without song and dance? Ah, dancing at the Sub-Zero's festival. You know, I also danced when I was younger. As a child, I even asked my grandmother why we performed the dance for the Lesser Lord when it was originally done to honor the Greater Lord. My grandmother said that Greater Lord Rukadavata is a beloved deity and honored by all. And Lesser Lord Kusanali is too. If the Goddess of Flowers ever knew Lesser Lord Kusanali, then she would certainly have wished to be her friend and hold celebrations for her, too. The Subzeru's festival has been losing its appeal over the years. Hmm. That is, until a wealthy benefactor stepped in this year and brought the festival back to life. I heard she forked out a lot of mora to make it all happen. Adventurer's Guild doesn't require any complicated functions. But saying and doing the same old things over and over again can get pretty monotonous. Like watching the same Fontaine movie day after day. But take you two, for example. 
You travel across to Vat to enrich your lives and gain new experiences. Well, we enjoy traveling across to Vat and all that, but we're mainly looking for clues about her brother. Yes, you should keep searching. Sometimes the answers we're looking for aren't necessarily at our intended destination. Instead, they're found along the way. Huh. Haven't we heard someone say something pretty similar recently? Uh, anyways, what brings you out here, Catherine? No, not particularly. I guess you could say that I'm loving the recent atmosphere here. If festivals bring happiness to everyone, then that's where their true value lies. Oh, it looks like it's about time for me to be heading back now. All right, we'll see you next time at the Adventures Guild. Oh, by the way, thanks for connecting us with the Aramites. We've already made some great friends in Sumeru City thanks to you. I'm sure you two will get along well with the people here. You've already been blessed by the element of Dendro, after all. <laughs> see you around! Hmm. There's something really different about Catherine today. Hey, Traveler. Paimon. Oh, hey, Dia. What's going on? I've got something to tell ya. My lady knows you're looking for ways to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali, and she's been trying to come up with a way to help you. Well, I have an idea that might help. Are you serious? We'd love that! It might not necessarily pan out, so don't get your hopes up too much. I'll need to take you two somewhere and ask someone some questions. Uh, my lady is feeling a little worn out at the moment. Nilu's found a place for her to rest. After I take my lady home, let's meet in front of the Citadel of Regzar. Sounds like a plan! Let's head over to the Citadel of Regzar and wait for Dia! I'm late. It took some convincing for the master and mistress to believe that Miss Dunyarzad was only sitting in the port for a while because she was in a bad mood. Anyway, I guess I should be thanking you. I haven't seen Miss Dunyarzad that happy in a long time. If it wasn't for you two, she probably would have been caught and dragged back much earlier. You sure sound a whole lot nicer than when we first met, Dia. Who would have thought you had such a soft spot for Dunyarzad? It's called being a professional. I'm a bodyguard, and I work for whoever's paying. <laughs> Look, Dia's blushing. Ugh, listen, you two. I don't expect to be working for Miss Dunyarzad very long, but I hope to finish things on a positive note if possible. Let's cut the chit-chat and head into the Citadel. We'll see if the person I know has a way for you two to meet with the Lesser Lord. Chief. Ha, <laughs> Dia! What are you doing here? And well, well. Didn't expect to see you three together. <laughs> I take it you all know each other already? Mm hmm. We met this morning after the Adventurers Guild pointed us to Ozfan for more info. No kidding. Hmm. So, where's Ruksha? I thought I'd help these two out by asking about the theft. Anything you can tell him? Rukshaw's gone over to the Academia. The Grand Sage recently ordered Sumero City to begin bolstering its defenses. So people from all over have been called back to the city. <clears throat> Since you've already mentioned the theft, I suppose I might as well tell him what we know. Appreciate it, Chief. Uh, theft? Sorry, what the heck are you guys talking about? 
talking about? Just recently, the Academia lost something. And there's a chance the item is connected with the Dendro Archon. This case might just somehow help you in meeting her. <laughs> I suppose that's one way to look at it. But if you ask me, the case is more about the Academia than anything else. Let me fill you in. The Academia recently sent a convoy to pick up an important package from Aru Village. Word got out, and the convoy was robbed on its way back. The Grand Sage took the whole matter very seriously. Not only did he dispatch the Matra, but also enlisted our help in the search for leads. All we know so far is that whatever was stolen is currently in Port Ormos. You two have heard of Port Ormos, haven't you? It's the largest commercial port in all of Sumeru. You can travel there by leaving Sumeru City and heading south along the river. The Academia's grip isn't long enough to reach all the way to Port Ormos, so the city's a little more laid back, meaning the population's also a mixed bag. You never know who you'll meet there. Apparently what was lost has a great deal to do with the Akasha, knowledge, and even the gods. I'm afraid I don't have any other details for you, though. If you're interested, maybe you can head to Port Ormos and ask around yourselves. If you want my advice, try introducing yourselves as students of the Academia once you're there. Are you serious, Chief? All the Academia students are in Sumeru City, you know. Why should they pretend to be students in Port Ormos? <laughs> If you're also interested, just go there and see what happens. Count me out. I've got plenty of work to do here for the Homayani family. And take it from me, if you two really do decide to visit Port Ormos, you'd best watch your backs. Let's just say that the Eremites there aren't nearly as friendly as those here in Sumeru City. There are even some extremists who go around shouting slogans like, Retake Sumeru for the Scarlet King! Word is that more and more are joining their movement. They're becoming a real headache for Chief and the others. You bet they are. The Scarlet King's been dead for thousands of years. Now they start spreading rumors of his return. Ridiculous. Not everyone's like you, Chief. Even the desert natives who abandon their homes in the wilderness still wish to have a god of their own. <sighs> well, Traveler, that's about all the information we have for you. Since we've gathered all we could for the moment in Sumeru City, let's head to Port Ormos and see what we can find next. Miss Dunyarzad is looking forward to seeing you both at the Subzerus Festival, so be sure to get yourselves back here in time for that. Good, then we'll see you both at the Subzerus Festival. Come, and have a good look yourself. Traditional spices of the highest quality, made with pride and experience. <laughs> You've got a deal. I can't thank you enough for always looking after my business. Believe me, I'm not making this up. Several Eremite mercenary groups are nearly in open conflict, but does the core of 30 care? <sighs> and that's not all. Did you know that... Sumeru? Uh, maybe 
Maybe it's because of what Dia told us earlier, but Paimon can't seem to shake the feeling that there's also danger lurking in these crowds. Ooh. Let's get our bearings so we can start looking for leads. We know that whatever the Academia lost is related to the gods. But other than that, we don't have much else to go on. Hmm. Asfa told us to try posing as Academia students while asking around. Paimon checked the Akasha on the way here, and the Academia doesn't seem to have any research facilities in poor Ormos. Paimon doesn't get it. Won't we look even more suspicious going around saying we're Academia students and asking about the stolen item? Well, given all the people that come through here every day, if there's any information to be found, Paimon bets we could find it in the market. Let's ask around and see what we come up with. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, how can I help you two? Ah, uh, hi there. We would like to ask you a question. Um, do students from the Academia ever come to Port Ormos? <laughs> of course. Especially around this time of year. Students from Sumero City that are about to graduate often come to Port Ormos to cut loose a little. Many people often talk about how hard it is to get accepted into the Academia, let alone graduate. But those who finish their studies and go on to become full-time researchers at the Academia have it even harder. Sure, we may not be Sumero City, but Port Ormos offers beautiful scenery and a stress-free environment. Some even say it's good luck to come to Port Ormos, so students and researchers come flocking here when things get to be too much at the Academia. Ah, you see over there? Those are students from the Academia. They've been looking worried and miserable ever since they got here a few days ago. If you ask me, the life of a merchant is better. So long as the Akasha teaches us what we need, then life is good. Hmm. Those students seem to be discussing something. Let's see if we can listen in. It's no good. I've tried asking around, but I haven't been able to learn anything useful. Not to mention that a bunch of scary-looking Aramite mercenaries have been posted along the streets now. There's been a lot of fighting between the different Aramite factions in Port Ormos. If we choose to move on our own, then it would be wise to steer clear of them. Especially the group that's constantly shouting some stuff about the Scarlet King and some resurrection. I've even heard that the Citadel of Regzar is starting to get fed up with them. What was that group called again? Ein something or other? They're called Ein El Achmar. Today, I heard that the thing we're after might be in their possession at the moment. Wait, come again? Don't you see? Many of the Aramites in Port Ormos deal with trading this kind of thing. They're usually pretty wary of outsiders, but not so with students of the Academia. It's because the kind of goods that students are looking for aren't the kind of goods that Aramites are after. As long as they know you're a student, then deals can be made. I've heard that Ein al Hakmar likes to set up shop at the Jafar Tavern. Supposedly, if you're willing to part with half a million Mora, They'll give you info on anything. Wait, wait, did you say half a million? If information alone costs that much, then how could we ever afford to buy what we're looking for? <sighs> I guess we might as well give up on trying to graduate this way. I wouldn't worry too much. Our field of research is very niche. Who else could possibly be after that kind of shady knowledge? I bet it's practically worthless to anyone aside from us. Well, I guess that makes sense. Then the only thing left for us now is to find a way in. Why don't we all just pool our money together and pay for the information? Whoa! Did you hear that? A niche field of research? And shady knowledge? It all sounds pretty suspicious to Paimon. Is knowledge something people just buy and sell like that? So, what's your plan? Wait, didn't 
Don't you hear what they just said? Buying information is going to cost us half a million mora! Have you lost your mind? Oh, all right. Paimon never thought she'd agree to parting with that kind of mora. But if you know what you're doing, then we should give it a shot. we heard those students talking about. Let's find a seat somewhere and see if we can spot the group they mentioned. Oh, you've arrived. Please take a seat. So, they think that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the boss? Ha! <laughs> Once we reclaim the power of the Scarlet King, they'll be the first that the boss punishes. <laughs> They're nothing to be afraid of. Our main rival now is the Caracal Battalion. They've also amassed a significant amount of more this time, so we mustn't underestimate them. How can the Caracal Battalion compete with the boss when they're nothing but a bunch of money-grubbing opportunists out for a quick mora? Yeah, with boss's fervent devotion, he'll be able to use this power to bring our god back this time. Huh. All these guys talk about is the Scarlet King, so they're probably the ones we're looking for. <laughs> Greater Lord Ruka Devata. That traitor and her followers must not be spared. The day will come when the Scarlet King exacts vengeance on Sumeru, and all of them shall be punished. Yeah, Paimon was wondering what they meant too. We should ask about that if we get the chance later. <laughs> Who are you? What do you want? A traveler? Uh, now's probably not the time to talk about that. Didn't the students say Aramites are wary of outsiders? A student? <laughs> What's a student from Sumeru City doing in Port Ormos? Ah, well, if it's info you want, you've come to the right place. The question is, can you afford it? Here, this is the merchant's address. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it there. Hmm? Well, what are you waiting for? Oh, that's right! We heard you mention the Scarlet King just now. We're actually interested to know more because... Uh... Because... We're... Uh... Archaeology students! <laughs> <sighs> Fine. Since you've already handed over the Mora, I guess I can throw in a little extra info. As you can see, members of Ain al Ahmar are devout believers of the Scarlet King. Years ago, the Scarlet King founded the great desert nation that was our homeland. It was an advanced civilization, far beyond anything you'll see in present-day Sumeru. The Scarlet King was the rightful god of wisdom, but he was betrayed by a companion he trusted. She even stripped him of his title, God of Wisdom. So, you mean the traitor was... Greater Lord Ruka Devata, yes. That shameless wretch destroyed the Scarlet King's civilization, and our ancestors were forced to flee to this land where we were made to suffer the tyranny of our enemies. Furthermore, she conspired with the Academia to cover up the truth of her actions and create the merciful and benevolent facade for which she is now known. Ugh, just thinking about it sickens me. <sighs> But the story doesn't end there, oh no. The Scarlet King isn't truly dead. The voice of the Oracle has been heard in the desert, prophesying his resurrection. 
Mark my words, our god shall return. And when that day comes, all followers of the traitor and all the desert dwellers who have forgotten their true god will suffer retribution together. If what I'm saying makes you shiver with fear, it might not be too late for you to become a believer of the Scarlet King. <laughs> I don't have anything to say to you academia people about that. I think this conversation has reached its end. Not just yet. This man is a fraud. Huh? <clears throat> you again? <sighs> Deranged academia lunatic. Yes, it's me again. I already warned you that if you weren't willing to sit and discuss things with me, I'd take measures to make things uncomfortable for you. Listen to me. That address he gave you is fake. Or at least, you won't find a merchant waiting for you there. This group has been boasting all around that they can provide information on a certain item as a means of luring people into their territory. Once you show up, they keep up the act until they have hard evidence that you want to purchase said item. Then they use that to squeeze you for all the more of your worth. Hey! Shut it all, Haytham! What are you playing at trying to ruin our business like this, hmm? I told you the other day. I wish to discuss my terms with your boss. Ha! The boss made it perfectly clear that he won't negotiate with you. Yes, and in no uncertain terms. But that was then. It does not preclude him from changing his mind in the future. I'm warning you. Don't push us, or this could get ugly. We don't usually get rough with people from the academia because it just complicates things. For a lunatic like you, though, we might just have to make an exception. If you're suggesting that we escalate this from a verbal exchange to a physical one, I accept. After all, even the Archons used war to negotiate the ownership of Tevat. If, on the other hand, we can't agree on any means of negotiation at all, then I'm afraid my next course of action will sting a little more than the mere falling through of a few business deals. I will jeopardize the Aramite's reputation, which I know you value above all else. I am quite confident that if I began to take such action, your boss would willingly approach me himself. However, I fear that by then, some things will have happened that cannot be undone. Also, a word of advice. I suggest you tell your boss exactly what happened here today. Otherwise, he might blame you for not telling him in the future. What did you say? Consider this. Have I ever failed to follow through on my word in the past? This guy is really out of his mind! Okay then, if you really have a death wish, let's meet a week from today. The pier in front of the Pharos Lighthouse, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, sharp. Don't expect us to hold back. Not so fast. First, you return the 500,000 mora to them. Please, I beg you, don't provoke them. We can't afford any trouble with this crowd. They haven't even paid for their food yet. Ah, Mr. Iman. There appears to be fewer staff in the restaurant recently. This wouldn't happen to be because they're all busy spreading the word to the students, would it? I, uh, well... <laughs> someone who chooses to do business with a group like that really can't afford to get so flustered the instant someone confronts them about it. Consider the meal compensation for our silence. I'd say you're getting an excellent deal. Whoa, did you see that? He not only got us our Mora back, but sent the Amorites running too! Plus, he seems to know a lot about what's going on around here. Let's catch up with him and ask some questions! He went that way! After him! Should I adjust the shipping schedule? Fresh fruits and veggies, both quantity and What do you want? No need for thanks. My goal was to get to them, and you two gave me just the opportunity I needed. 
We're even. Oh, I advise you to keep your distance from them. Since they weren't able to make off with your Mora in the end, they might harass you again in the future. <sighs> Alright. Goodbye. Hold your horses! We still have something to ask you about! <sighs> Since you tore through their scam right in front of them, you must know the real story about a... Ahem... <clears throat> Certain something, no? Who exactly are you two? And why are you inquiring about that? A student. <laughs> right. Look, you should know that those thugs conducting business with you had nothing to do with your lie. Huh? Oh, yeah! She's really strong! Weren't you saying something about a physical exchange? We can help with that. She doesn't even have a vision. Forget it. Maybe not, but she can still use elemental energy. Otherwise, there's no way we'd go asking for info from I'm... I'll... I... Uh, um... From guys like that. Those high-headed thugs are definitely gonna bring a lot of backup for your next meeting. Even if you don't go alone, you won't regret taking us with you. Hmm. Uh... <sighs> All right. I accept. Got a pen and paper? If you're searching for someone who sells that kind of merchandise, I'll give you one of their addresses, and you can try your luck. We'll reconvene at the appointed time by the pier. It doesn't matter if you show up or not. Um, so, since you were happy to give us this merchant's information, does that mean you can tell us exactly what we're after? You were willing to part with 500,000 Mora for something and you didn't even know what it was? <laughs> okay. Well, if you truly are as skilled as you claim, then you can beat the answer out of them when they become hostile. Look, if you've been making inquiries, then you have to know something by now. Tell me what you know so far, so I don't waste time repeating information. We know it's connected to the Academia somehow, and that not only do the Aramites deal in it, but some students want to get a hold of it too. Hmm, what else? You know almost everything there is to know. But you're unable to compile this information because you've never seen the object before. This is what you've been looking for. Huh? Paimon can't tell what it is. It looks like some kind of ornament. This is a knowledge capsule. To put it simply, it's a vessel that can store a fixed quantity of canned knowledge. It's like a miniature Akasha. Anyone who links it to their personal Akasha terminal instantly becomes privy to its contents. Correct. Anyone. Unlike the Akasha, which heavily regulates who can access what information, knowledge capsules can further contents without any requisites. That's amazing! It's essentially a convenient and harmless vestibule for knowledge. Unfortunately, it's illegal in Sumeru to privately possess or trade them. They were created as a means for scholars to transfer knowledge gained from Ermansoul into the Akasha, and are intended to be destroyed immediately after use. But despite strict regulations, some of these knowledge capsules will always escape destruction. After all, there will always be those in this world who are dissatisfied with life as designed for them by the Akasha, and wish to change their fate. Over the past century, a wide variety of canned knowledge has been leaked from the Academia. Now, in Port Ormos, the valuable ones are a means to Mora for the Aramites. Meanwhile, those which the Aramites deem to be useless to them occasionally prove useful to the common citizens and hapless Academia students. Well, I think that about sums it up. Hmm... So that's your true objective. With our current arrangement, I don't believe I can offer an answer. <sighs> You're still resolved. Fine. Let's talk somewhere with fewer people.
Let's continue our conversation here. If you wish to learn more about the knowledge capsule that the Academia lost, then you must help me with something. I need you to find someone named Dory, a traveling merchant. Unlike the peddlers who hawk inferior knowledge capsules, she often has quality goods in stock. Some say that as long as there is profit to be made, there is nothing she won't dare to sell. She's guarded against people from the Academia because most of her wares don't comply with Academia regulations. I think she blacklisted me. I met with her informant, but it soon became clear that they had no intention of letting me get any further. Become one of Dory's customers and earn her trust. This is my condition for further collaboration. Why do you want us to meet with her? Until you complete this task, you don't have question privileges. Oh, fine. So how do we go about doing this? You two are outlanders who haven't been here for long, so Dory should view you as safe clients. I'll give you the informant's address and their contact password. Beyond the password, though, I have no way of knowing what other tricks she might have up her sleeve. You'll have to improvise. Uh, this is kind of nerve-wracking. The true challenge begins after you meet her. She has a keen nose for Mora and a shrewd eye for wares, and she only likes customers who she deems to have good taste. I'll prepare some funds for you. Buy her highest quality wares and earn her approval. What? We only just saw a knowledge capsule for the first time! We don't know how to tell which ones are good and which ones are bad. Uh, is that something we can learn quickly? Hmm, that's true. Have you two heard of Elemental Sight? Oh, well, that's a surprise. I guess I'll have to hold you in higher regard. Anyway, that ability should resolve your issue. Here are two knowledge capsules. Tell me, can you detect any difference in their quality? Um, they look the same to Paimon. Try inspecting them with elemental sight. Did you see anything? Rumor has it that higher quality knowledge capsules generally appear brighter when viewed through elemental sight. That's because knowledge originates from Erminsoul, the root of Dendro power itself. The more powerful the knowledge, the richer it is in Dendro energy. However, some canned knowledge with a high concentration of elemental energy is of little use in contemporary times, so those capsules are of little value. Using Elemental Sight is merely a stopgap measure, but it should suffice for earning Dory's trust. That sounds pretty impressive! Here's a sheet with the informant's location and contact password, and here is the Mora for purchasing canned knowledge. Don't be cheap. You'll need to spend to catch Dory's eye. If there's any Mora left over, just keep it. Oh, and be sure to exercise some caution. There have been Matra present in Port Ormos lately. Your efforts will be for naught if they catch you. Matra? Hmm. They belong to the Academia's regulatory body. They also handle cases of illegal canned knowledge transactions. Like I said, the Academia has banned both their trade and possession. The Matra are razor sharp. You're in for nothing good if they lock their sights onto you. If you two want to back out, now's the time. Okay, then we have a deal. If you succeed in your dealings with Dory, come find me at the Wikela Funduk. We'll have an open discussion then. Looking at what Al Haytham wrote, Dory's informant is a traitor near Old Ormos. Let's follow these instructions and try to get in contact with him. <laughs>